Welcome to this special edition of Marin Voices and Views. I'm Lawrence A. Strick, and tonight I'm flying solo. Peter B. Collins is on special assignment in Ohio, attending his, his mother's 90th birthday. But tonight I'm happy to welcome back Mayor of San Rafael, Gary Phillips. Thanks for coming. My pleasure, Larry. Mayor Phillips has been a resident of San Rafael for 20, since 1972. Over that time, he's raised his family here and he's become more and more involved in civil, civic life. He's a member of the Dixie School Board for eight years on the San Rafael Planning Commission, three terms on the City Council, and was elected mayor in 2011. You also have a day job. <laughs> mayor Phillips is a partner in DZH Phillips LLP a regional CPA and business advisory firm and a consulting firm here in California, in San Francisco, right? Correct. This guy knows his stuff. <laughs> Before we get into some of the issues like taxes that are thorny, can you give us an overview of the state of the city? We know that everyone uh, is coming through a pretty darker times. Right. Uh, people are getting back on their feet. There's been some deferred maintenance, other issues and cutbacks. How are we doing now? And what does it look like for you in the near future? Well, Larry, you've, you've actually provided a pretty good summary. We have gone through a difficult time, we being the city. Um, as everyone knows, we went through the Great uh, Recession in 2008, 2009, recovering a little bit, 10, 11, and even more so now. But we're still not back to where we were in 2006 in terms of uh, revenues for the city. During that period of time, the city cut back on their staff about 60 from 440, so that's a significant uh, reduction. And uh, those 60 have not been replaced uh, in any meaningful way. So we are still being impacted by the difficult uh, financial times that you've uh, suggested. But we are coming back. <coughs> and and uh, we are uh, in a better financial position now than we were then. But during that period, of course, we had to cut back on significant uh, um, services to our community, including the maintenance of uh, some of our facilities. So we're behind the eight ball in that regard. And, and trying to recover, and as you know, tonight's topic will cover how we're going to go about doing that. Before we get into to the, the, the weeds or meat and potatoes of the tax mm. increase, I wanted to show the folks mm. what, uh, what the current status of one of the firehouses is here in right. San Rafael. Right, good. Why don't station we take one. A, why don't we take, station one, why don't we take a look? We're standing out in front of San Rafael Fire Station number one. Uh, the main part of the, of the station where you can see the two apparatus doors were built in 1918. As you can see, the clearance here, the, the, the engine actually doesn't fit. It can't come straight out. If it were to come straight out, obviously this whole side of the engine would get hit. Um, so they, they have to come in at an angle. It's a slow maneuver going in and out. And, and the reason is, is that there's no room on this side of, of, the, uh, of the apparatus to get in and out. So this is, this is so that the, uh, the driver or, or the, the engineer, as we call them, can get in and out of the apparatus. The door opening for the uh, station is, um, is very small and was, was made for fire engines in 1918 and, and not in the, you know, the year 2008. The doors are uh, original doors. Uh, these were put in when the station was built in 1918. They're wood with uh, glass pane and they're mechanically operated. We generally keep them open during the day because they're, they're slow to open. At night we close them for security reasons. This is the original electrical uh, supply for the station from 1918 and we're still in use for the upstairs primarily. Now we're standing in the front part of fire station number two. Uh, this was a uh, dedication plaque that was put uh, on the station in 1957 when it was actually erected. You can see there's numerous cracks uh, here just above the foundation, numerous cracks up on the wall. And again, major concern for a catastrophic event, um, especially when we're supposed to be the ones providing the emergency coverage. So. Uh, major concern, and again, no uh, seismic retrofit whatsoever on this station. This is important civic safety stuff. Right. Uh, there's a real chance that uh, something untoward could happen and we wouldn't be in a position to have modern facilities and response teams. And I would imagine that's one of the big concerns that you have as mayor. Well, it, it is, uh, Larry. Um 
course, I, my worst nightmare would be a significant earthquake and uh, not be able to uh, have our uh, public safety, police and fire respond. And that's a real possibility as it exists now because as you can tell from the, the condition of the facility from the previous tape, um, it's, it's in, in uh, pretty dire need of upgrading. Uh, that, nothing has changed since that uh, tape was uh, prepared a, a couple of years ago and so we've been faced with this issue and I was faced with it on city council for, for a number of years and so the question might be why haven't we addressed that? Uh, the answer is simple. Uh, I, I do look at the financials and, and try to assess where the city is at financially and from my perspective and I think it's accurate that we simply can't afford our current operating funds to do the necessary upgrades and repairs that are necessary to our facilities. So we're going to go out to the community and ask for help specifically to address that concern. And the, the help that you're seeking is, is, a, is a ballot measure. Correct. It, and it's a ballot measure that's coming on in November and it's seeking to increase a sales tax. Currently, the sales tax is 8.5%. The state, and I want to walk through mm -hmm. this, the yes. state gets 7.5% of that, right. and the county gets 1%, right. the remaining 1%. In 2005, it's my understanding, mm -hmm. city of San Rafael uh, increased the sales tax for this city Correct. point by a half, half a penny. Right. That's sunsetting. That's going to be expiring soon. Right. And what you're asking for is an extension of the 2005 sales tax and an additional one quarter of a penny sales tax, bringing this total, the total sales tax here in San Rafael to 9.25%. Yes, that and that's, that's, that, that's a good summary. Uh, we are doing that. We are asking that the uh, tax that was approved by about 71% of the voters in, in 2005 for a 10 year period uh, be extended. Uh, we're not quite at that 2015 point, but uh, the election has to occur on simultaneous with city council elections, so that would either be 2013 this year or two years from now, 2015, and we decided to, um, to have the election take place now rather than wait until we're at the you know, drop dead date. Uh, didn't seem smart. So we are asking for the community to extend that uh, half percent, as you mentioned. Um, and then in addition to that, recognizing that that just supplements uh, the operating budget as we now know it, and therefore we're still behind the eight ball with regard to the significant improvements that uh, the tape indicates uh, and that we are certainly aware of. And so we said that uh, we should ask the community to support our effort to improve those facilities so that we can respond in the case of uh, a catastrophic earthquake, which we all, I suspect I am, and I expect you and most all, believe is going to happen sometime. Is it going to happen uh, this week, next week? Uh, I certainly hope not before the election. <laughs> and, and that increase, too, is going to sunset. And that you're asking yes. for a 20-year sunset Correct. on that. Now, people here, and, and by the way, you're one of four municipalities <laughs> right. in the county that's seeking an increase. Correct. Uh, Corte Madera, Larkspur, Larkspur. And, San Anselmo. and San Anselmo right. are also doing that to, at various points for similar reasons. Right. They all have their own unique needs, as we do, but for the very basic reasons uh, uh, that we've already outlined. So when folks hear that the tax is going to be 9.25 percent, my, my natural inclination to think is, oh my God, they're just going to flip out and say, no, 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 no. You tell me otherwise. You say that as you all look at it and having your ears to the ground, uh, you're hearing that more than half, 60 some odd percent, mm -hmm. are, are basically um, in favor of this. Were you surprised yeah. by that? No, not really. Uh, the community, uh, and I've been involved in the school districts and, and other, other measures that ask the community to step up, and the community has always uh, stepped up. More recently, though, for the library, uh, I ran a major C campaign for the library. And the community stepped up 71% for, for the library. The community has been great. Uh, they really recognize uh, the needs. Uh, we've had a, a survey of community services um, that the city is providing uh, every, uh, every other year. And that indicates that people are, are quite uh, pleased with the services that they're receiving. People don't mind paying if they think they're getting good service. And um, so far, our indications are that that's where the community is at. 
specifically with regard to this measure, we're getting indications of about 65% uh, in favor. Of course, there will always be some opposed, but in this case, our, uh, our community recognizes the needs. Uh, they're, they're smart people. They get it. Um, they think that, uh, and I believe, the city is, is well run and efficiently run. We can make improvements, and we're trying to do that in some certain areas. But for overall, uh, pretty satisfied with the services, and I, I, I think that the uh, community is going to favor this. Because, like I said, if, if something were to happen, my, my biggest nightmare, and I presume for others as well, is that we can't run the, uh, the engines out with paramedics and we're all uh, up the creek at that point. So to me, 25 cents on a $100 purchase is a small price to pay. Well, it's a vote of confidence for you all in the, right. in the city council as well, right. and that's good to hear. The other issue that I, and I see is when you look at that tape, and I hear you talk and, and we talk to the public safety uh, people in the fire department and the police stations, is that this stuff has got to be fixed. It does. I mean, this is not a luxury item. No. This is not building a spa for the city council. <laughs> uh, this is making sure a fire truck could get on 4th Street if there's a problem. Yes. And if we don't have the community support, and if for some reason this uh, tax is voted down, the funds are going to have to be spent on this uh, civic improvements mm -hmm. regardless. Yes. That means that whatever limited funds that are available for other things may have to be cut back. And right. have you thought about um, where that might come from? And wouldn't it, by necessity, mm -hmm. really diminish the quality of life here in San Rafael if we had to use resources right. for that rather than other things? Yeah, again, a good summary. Uh, you're absolutely right. This is something that we have to do. Uh, at the same time, recognizing that if this does not pass, we're talking about... Uh, uh, about $10 million, $7 million of which would come out of the operating fund. We have a total budget of about uh, $58 million. Um, but a $7 million on, on $58 is uh, significant. That's not paper clips. That's not, you know, uh, phones. That's people. And right now, as I mentioned, we've cut back on the staff to about uh, 60 uh, from a base of 440. So if you think about it, those 60 have been doing, would have been doing a lot of services that uh, we would all appreciate. Uh, down to mowing the lawns in the parks. I mean, it gets down to nitty-gritty stuff, and we have already eliminated those, so therefore uh, we're going to be jeopardizing, in my view, um, out of necessity, not out of wish or want, but out of necessity, some real basic services, uh, police, fire, library, public works, etc. This is basic stuff that our people uh, in our community expect, and, and I certainly uh, expect to deliver those. But Quite frankly, without this, uh, we're not going to be able to do that. So uh, we're not talking about fat on the bone here. We're talking no. about real, I mean, there's going to be more cuts yeah. if, if we, there, no more money comes in because of the really dire need of the safety issues. Right. I mean, we, uh, we have a very little uh, limited reserve, uh, not to my satisfaction. Uh, we should have about $6 million. We've got um, less than half of that. That's not a good place to be, so I do want to build that up. I think for good reason, um, and certainly we'd have to dip into that, but that, that goes pretty quickly. On a, it's got a budget of 12 months for $58 million, so you don't have much of a reserve, and, and that's not where it should be. So we, we've got our work cut out for us, even if this passes, because keep in mind, the, the half a percent is to continue as we currently exist, that is with a reduction of 60 people, and the quarter is specifically, in my mind, and, and we as a city council will so decide, because it will be general funds, uh, and therefore a decision we made with how those funds are to be used, uh, but more than likely uh, for the facilities we've just talked about. It's interesting you say general funds. Uh, going back to uh, Proposition 13 in, 2000, in 1978, right. uh, when cities put uh, tax measures on the ballot, if they're directed at a specific uh, issue, firehouse, Correct. Correct. Uh, the vote on that is 66 and two-thirds. <laughs> you, you corrected me earlier. You got it. Uh, but when a sales tax is put on the ballot, that the funds are going to the general fund, Correct. discretionary for your city council. Right. Um, it's, a fifth, it's a simple majority. It now, is. simple ain't so simple because you still need 50.1%. <laughs> you do. You do. Um, is, what was the thoughts uh, on, on your mind regarding that issue as it applies to the tax? Well, the principal thought was, one, we need to, uh, to accomplish this task, and how do we go about doing that? Second, uh, I, I think, I feel that the community has confidence in us that we will be able to do that if, uh, if they give us the discretion to do so. 
so that we don't specifically have to say this is exactly how it's going to be used, but we'll make that decision based on the, the, the needs and the application of the funds we receive uh, for those needs. So the, the thought was we've got to do it, how to, how's best do it, and then uh, does the community have confidence that we'll be able to pull this off? And I think the answer to both of those is yes. I'm glad you did that because as I'm listening to you think or talk, I'm thinking that you know that's democracy. We mm -hmm. we right. are electing you as our leader. We are entrusting you with our uh, s duties to right. be good citizens, and we should uh, in demur. I'll use one of my words right, right. to your judgment <laughs> um, in how to spend those funds and not yeah. not tie your hands. Yeah, well, I appreciate that, and and we take it pretty seriously. We've got an outstanding city council. Um, I think. Uh, Certainly, the majority agrees. I voted by the majority right. uh, to uh, to carry out the will of those that we represent. So we're we're pretty serious about this. Frankly, we um, we know what we're doing and uh, pretty driven to accomplish. And so, therefore, I'm comfortable that if the community supports us in this measure, that they'll be satisfied with the outcome. People are anxious though when it comes mm -hmm. to government mm -hmm. right. and and people if you get 10 people in a room you can have 12 right. voices about what should be done on half <laughs> right. the occasions and one of the one of the one of the issues that's loudly being mm -hmm. talked about in Marin is the Marin County uh, pension obligations yes. and we very often hear uh, pension obligations are vilified there's right. always some story about someone who's triple dipping and getting right. a fortune um, and sitting there watching Oprah or something. <laughs> um, and that's generally not the case. I mean, what, right. what we're talking about is plain folks, librarians, clerks, right. janitors, who vast give, majority. Vast majority have given Correct. their professional lives to the civic Correct. for civic duty, and we've made promises to them. Yes. Uh, and those promises include pensions. Right. What are you all doing here in San Rafael on that issue, and do you feel that we could? Um, work to meet those obligations mm -hmm. and it's sort of like mm -hmm. too late to change them anyway. Well, those are all good points. Um, I set up at the, uh, a couple years ago when I was elected, uh, seven ad hoc committees to make sure that we didn't lose sight of what I consider to be the principal issues uh, facing the city. One of those is the uh, pension. So we were addressing it head on. Uh, Andrew McCullough and I sit on that uh, ad hoc committee, in fact at a meeting yesterday to further uh, address uh, some of the concerns you've expressed. But what we have done is, uh, over this last two-year period of time, uh, we said, uh, unlike in the past, there will be no borrowing to pay for the pension obligation uh, on an annual basis. There will be no borrowing for the health benefits. We're going to uh, modify operations so we can satisfy those without the, the borrowing uh, that some have done um, in a significant way, if you look at the county, for example. Um, so we have avoided that. Uh, we've put together, uh, I think, reasonable five-year projections to s make sure that we're covered for that period of time. Beyond that, it's hard to predict uh, what, what's going to occur. Uh, but we know that in that time frame, we're going to be able to uh, sustain the, the pension plans as they exist and the obligations that there are. They're significant. Um, obligation is probably $158 million, so that's a big number. Uh, but we have put together an amortization plan to, to provide for that. And uh, truth be known, we have, uh, we being the city now, have, have modified our pension plan uh, for uh, existing and, and currently hired employees to the extent limited by law, uh, in both pension and, and the health. So we're in a place where I have now asked uh, that we have an independent uh, committee, citizens committee, to look at uh, the city of San Rafael, its pension uh, situation with regard to current law, because I want to know if there's anything more that can be done. And if there is, then we will sit down and, and address that. Uh, my, my sense is that we've done just about everything that is permitted by law. And uh, so therefore, it's going to take uh, action at, uh, in uh, Sacramento. But I want to know that we've done everything we can before we, we uh, uh, March on uh, Sacramento, so to speak. Some of this, the, the five-year issue is because y you have to wait on the return of your investments to determine mm -hmm. what the revenues are going to be, mm -hmm. I would assume. Well, we look at it from an operating standpoint, and we'll make some uh, pretty conservative projections with regard to the revenues to make sure that we're going to be able to satisfy the, the current uh, obligations under operating obligations. And then, um, like I said, beyond that, it's a little hard to, to predict. But certainly with regard to the pension plan, uh, we have little control over how much of the contribution is to be made. That's decided by MSERA. 
uh, and we're in compliance with that. They're meeting over the next uh, three weeks to talk about rates of return and some of the other things we're concerned about to make sure we're uh, able to satisfy those pension obligations. Uh, so this is hard work, roll up your sleeve work, and yet we hear or I hear, and you read in the paper, all these experts, these folks that just know everything somehow, uh, with doom and gloom, and they say, oh, this is a ticking time bomb, uh, this is a reckless spending, it's just bloated, um, that everyone, every household in Marino is $25,000 on this, and they're throwing out these numbers and these ideas that, frankly, uh, I don't understand and are never made clear for me. Mm. Do you think it's time for people to kind of like step back and wait and see what happens with the finances and what you all could do rather than just start throwing, uh, throwing rhetoric all over the place? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, my main concern is that there is a lot of rhetoric and that is I know some of it's factual and some is not. What I'm trying to do is sort out for the community what, uh, what the difference is between the two so we're dealing with fact and not um, not uh, someone's um, wild imagination and play. That's why I've formed this committee. Uh, it's going to be independent. I'm going to say to that committee, go off and look at it, report back without an influence. Then I plan on having an a, a open forum, perhaps at Dominican, that's to be uh, resolved with, with people from all, all sides of the issue uh, come together and say, now based on the facts as we know them, not you know supposition, uh, let's talk about where we should be going in the future to, to address it as best we can. So right now I feel comfortable we're on top of it uh, that can be funded. Uh, I've, I've asked the staff, I've said, look, if I was president of this company, I want to know what our liabilities are. As mayor of the city, I want to know what our liabilities are. And whatever they are, we'll deal with. But, you know, let's not play games with anyone. Um, and, and the staff has been very, very responsive. Um, and so I'm comfortable with the staff input. Like I said, I want an independent uh, committee to look at it as well. Um, so I, I wish the amount were smaller, but it's not. And so therefore we have to deal with it. And we're able to, uh, we're not Stockton, we're not Fresno, we're not Detroit. Uh, our base is, is solid. Property tax or holdings uh, firm. Sales tax is starting to get to a, a better place. Uh, through, certainly we have unmet needs as we talked about earlier, but we are, we are not um, in the state that uh, some of those other cities found themselves. So we've talked about the, the bummers of the job. Yeah. Where is the money coming from <laughs> and, and, and there ain't enough of it. Uh, you've only had the job, it's, two, it's coming on two years, right? Yeah, it's coming on two years. Two years. Uh, other than taxes and, 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 and worried about <laughs> pensions, you must be doing some other things. What are the fun parts of your job, and where, where are we going, and, and where's the light here in San Francisco? Well, you know, that's, that's, a, that's also another good question. Um, there's a lot of good stuff. Uh, the community has been great. I've been very supportive, uh, and I greatly appreciate that because it would be a little trying if not. Um, I get a little nicked on occasion, but that's probably uh, uh, called for. Uh, but yeah, no, we're, uh, we're actually making some progress in some other areas that make me feel uh, good. Um, we have a homeless committee that's uh, doing some outstanding work. Uh, we've got a downtown streets team. Uh, the community was able to bring together uh, through some, uh, some funding efforts to provide for the, the streets team, and they now have six otherwise homeless uh, uh, employed. Um, and, and some in ho housing. What, what uh, is that? There's, uh, describe that a little bit. I, I'm a little confused by that. Yeah, I'm glad you asked. I didn't want to get into too much detail. Um, about a year ago, uh, we said that we want to do something constructive with regard to homeless, and we formed, I formed a, an ad hoc committee to, to look at the homeless situation. And I said, I want three meetings. I want to talk about it for you know, 10 years. I want three meetings with specific points that we can accomplish. Uh, we being San Rafael. I said, I didn't want to go to the county, I don't want to go to the state, and what can San Rafael do? And we came up with eight points. One of those was downtown streets team, which that is, uh, is uh, a group out of Palo Alto, because I didn't want to throw in a learning curve. Mm -hmm. so how do you do this and fumble around? I wanted to bring somebody that knew what they were doing, so we brought in a, an excellent group from Palo Alto. What they do is they work with, uh, originally thought, 12, now it's actually 24 individuals that uh, are otherwise, for the most part, homeless. Uh, gives them employment. You'll see them on the streets, clean up the streets, cigarette butts, graffiti, etc. And for about half the day and the other half, uh, some other skills that they need to get uh, employment uh, and leading to housing. I mean, ultimately, I want that, that objective to be to satisfy the housing requirement. So they're out uh, working uh, with that group, and like I said, we're seeing results there. 
One other thing we asked, uh, I asked of City Council on October 15th, it was passed, was a hiring of a liaison officer to work with our police and try to uh, deal one-on-one -on -one with homeless individuals that we find on the downtown street in their parks. They were trying to address it in an active way rather than just complain about it. That liaison officer is there to meet one-on-one, -on -one, uh, encounter, if you will, in some cases one-on-one -on -one with the homeless, to find out what their needs are and match them up with a provider to help that particular person get into a better place. We also have some other uh, some enforcement issues, uh, encampments. Seventy percent of our fire calls are encampments, homeless encampments. We said we want those cleaned out and we funded so that we're, we're in the process of doing that. And, there is certainly evidence of that. Chief Bishop must be happy to have your help then. Chief Bishop is outstanding. She, uh, she's getting things done. She's very She's effective. relatively new too. Right? She's relatively new. Good, good question. Uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm just delighted uh, to work with the, the chief. And for that matter, quite frankly, our police force, and this goes across the board, uh, I'm pleasantly surprised, I must say, with regard to the quality of the people we have. They really are outstanding. Outstanding. Yeah. You mentioned you get nicked a little bit. Over the past couple months in Marin County, uh, politics here seems to become a contact sport. <laughs> What's your read on this? Is this new? Is this where we're going? or what? You know, I, I, I hope not. Um, it's sort of not my, my style. I mean, if somebody, uh, if somebody uh, doesn't do something quite right, they'll know it. Um, but it would be in, in privately and, and more effectively, I would suggest. So some of, the, some of the politics we're seeing uh, is not my game, and I, I want no part of it. And uh, I think that we've gone through a period where, you know, some public meetings, I encountered one not too long ago, well, a year ago, where there was some public discourse, and uh, we've kind of gone through that to an end point, the, the, the PDA at the Civic Center, the end point where uh, we had a, an informed meeting, uh, made some decisions, the public, uh, some were happy and some were not, but they were respectful. So in San Rafael, I see a, a change, and I'm, I'm grateful for it. Well, Mayor Phillips, thank you for coming in. I'm glad we had an opportunity to talk about the, the measure that's thank on you. the ballot. I get the sense you're looking forward to people voting yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Good sense. Okay, vote yes, <laughs> vote if, yes if you want a better fire protection. And we'll see you soon after this passes and see how it goes. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.